Black African power. What's good? What's happening? A well organized lie. Defeats a disorganized truth every time. Woohoo, we, man, y'all already know what it is, man. It's God killing the house. And I come to do what I got to do. And I got to do what I got to do. I'm standing tall. I'm standing strong. Hey, Bobby banging this bitch. What's good, family? Man, y'all hear me at the beginning of every broadcast. I say, Black African Power. I've done videos on this. Why do I say Black African Power? I feel like it's a rite of passage for African Americans, Black Americans, to understand their history in totality. 
their American history. So I say black, right? Because we we are the original black people. I'm gonna say this again. We're the ones that went through the strainer of racism, white supremacy. We vote on our names. We turn down the term Negro, which, which means black, interesting. Maybe the Negro sound wild. Colored, get off of that. We settled on African-American and black Americans. We settled on that, right? And the African part is so that we never forget where we came from. So it's important to learn that. There's a lot of twists and turns and nuances in that. So that's why I say African-American, black African power. That's not for everybody. I'm not sure everybody even understands that. I get attacked on all sides for that. But I know what I want to do. And I know what I'm talking about. This be my legacy, not y'all's. So when I hear conversations, I, I first think everybody has a right to their opinion because it's just that your opinion. I always feel like we should have an informed opinion. Please let your opinions be informed. With, with with all the context that is important because if you take things out of context you become a baptist preacher to me cutting and pasting scripture scripture sound one way until you look at the whole context and you realize it's crazy so y'all see the statement there was a there was a discussion in the discourse and i'm glad i missed all of it but i heard the gist of what they was talking about so i'm not corrupted in what they was talking about when i say what i'm about to say it says it is a net is it a net positive that colonialism came to Africa and where African Americans ended up There's two parts to this is it a net positive well if you're sitting in AC right now telescopes behind your back books everywhere food I can go to the refrigerator get what I want to get I can go get vaccinated Right, I got freedom of speech. You ain't running up in here trying to shoot me. Now, unless I say something extra wild, extra wild, extra wild. Um, you would say, yeah, that's a very positive thing. That's a net positive because then you look at Africa and say, God damn it, the, the, the internet ain't staying on. Is that depending on where you at? Nowhere in Africa do you all the lights stay on all the time. You start saying, man, a lot of you can't get access to drinking water like you need to in a lot of areas. Right, there's a lot of strife, a lot of wars being fought. Is um, I can't go to the Sudan They're in the middle of a civil war right now. I know that we tried to get an expert on it. it was like they got back, just got out of there. Like, hold on, let me get my mind right. So we 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 look at uh countries like China, United States, right? They go in, they get resources, they, they cut bad deals with them. Maybe some are good deals, right? They don't have no control over the coal boat. They you know they cut the, the, the government in in Africa take resources and don't trickle it down to the people and all of that you saying shit positive but that's looking at it in 2024 and i wouldn't expect anybody that's a high level thinker to put that together like that you're missing a very important piece and it's called colonialism what is colonialism it was a way of doing business it was a way of colonizing people. It was a way of, uh, of detaching people from their way of life so that other people could exploit them. I'm gonna say this again. What is colonialism? By its nature, it's racism. It is a way from detaching indigenous people from their way of life to make them easy pickings, to make their resources available to colonial powers. Because if you stay connected, you might fight like Shaka Zulu and them would have fought. You may have fought like the great Masis would have fought. But once you get connected, ah, 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 it's exploitation at high levels. That's what colonialism, let's look it up, right? So we need to get a working definition, right, on what colonialism is. And I heard the conversation between the rabbi and Candace Owens. I was just getting into it, okay? Rabbi Barclay. And what he did was, right? I'm only 10 minutes, I'm five minutes into it. I already know they don't like each other. That's gonna be a good one. What he did was he defined something that was essential. 
what I'm saying? What what is being anti-Semitic? And it was amazing. <laughs> what he went to was he actually went to the talking about when Christianity broke away from Judaism, right? And how the Christians start saying that that you're like the devil if you don't believe in Christ in a certain way. And that was very interesting. I actually got what he was saying, how they was looked at as the devil. And the reason I'm saying this is because that's exactly what happened to us. Once you deemed us black, we're, we're looked at as being evil, subhuman, filthy, dirty, and the devil. And from that point on, point on people felt justified in the treatment of our people. That's the same way that rabbi was trying to say. I know a lot of people just missed that, but I caught that. I got that. Struggle is struggle. So let's see what colonialism is real fast. Let me see. We can kind of get an understanding of it, right? We, we, we put the things in proper context, right? So we ain't running around here crazy. Okay. I want to read, hold on. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. We need to put this in right context, man. Because, you know, I'm sitting here saying, sh 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 feel good in here. I'm a little hot outside. I got the AC on. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, it's, you know, I'm saying shit. You know, I, of course we would say that. And I'm a proud black American, yo. I'm happy to be an American. I'm saying right now. But if you ask me, was it a net positive? Then I got to look at everything and then I got to make it make sense. I can't change no pieces. Don't, don't, do you know what I'm saying? If you change a piece, right, then you didn't change the piece. If you take us out of America, you would ask yourself, would it be this way? If they had 400, if they didn't have 400 years of free labor, would it have been this way? Okay, let me move on to the definition of what colonialism is. See, I'm see, we starting to get that right. Yeah, take out the black African power, the power that powered colonialism at the end of the day for free for 400 years globally. You take away the global slave trade. And you take away the majority of their finances, which allowed them to move their thing forward very, very fast. Manpower ruled the day. Not only manpower, but free manpower. It ain't looking like this right now if we wasn't here powering that. If indigenous cultures was not raped and robbed and stolen all the resources, take all that out. This ain't looking like this. It's looking like a wild forest. See what I'm saying? Let's move on to this, though. We can't leave none of that out. Great conversation. I'm going to drop the link early and often, right? I know there's some people that disagree, right? We're not cussing each other out, right? I'm very, very passionate about this. So we need to define words first. Defining words is essential to this particular conversation. That's why I love, I absolutely love, the server because great thought is generated. I just felt like I'm not gonna waste that good time content right there. So you go, colonialism is the pursuing, establishing and maintaining a control and exploitation, exploitation. It's an action or fact of treating someone unfairly in order to benefit from their work. All right. OK. Of people and of resources by a foreign group of people. We know who the groups were, the colonial powers. Implemented through the establishment of col mm. colonies and possibly colonies. Coloniality and possibly colonies. This colonization keeps the colonized territory and people uh social economically othered and look sub uh sub -balterned to the colonizers mm, mm, mm. that's a good one let me get out did i say that wrong subaltern the hell does that mean 
Uh. Subaltern. Man. Let's see if I can get the hold on. <laughs> it says Subaltern. Come on now. Subaltern. Never heard that word before. Postcolonial studies and, and critical theory. The term subaltern designates and identifies the colonial population who, who are socially, politically, and geographically excluded from the hierarchy of power of an imperial colony and from the metropolitan homeland of an empire. Man. Okay. To the colonizers, all right, and the metropole. Man. While calmly advanced as an imperialistic, an imperialist reg regime, colonialism can take the more particular and potentially autonomous, autonomous form of settler colonialism. When colonial settlers pursue a more complete colonization of the land and people often towards a replacement and possibly even genocide of a native population. I mean, everything about that is wild. Everything about that is wild. Everything about that is wild. That's why we got to come to black people here. Because that's what happened to you. All that is wild. Ain't nothing good in that. I mean, ain't not look, ain't one part of that good. You can't even find a good part of that. All that means somebody robbing and stealing and taking and, and all kinds of just crazy, crazy, crazy. Right? So black is a racialized classification. All right. It's a racialized, and now, now what? Then we go to racialization because this is what colonial powers did. They racialized it. What was what was they doing? Racialization or ethnic or ethnic ethnication is a a uh, sociological concept used to describe a political process of ascribing ethnic or racial identity to, to a relationship. What was the relationship? Slave and slave master. Social practice or group that did not identify itself as such. We don't want to hear that. Or the infusion of race in a society understanding the understanding of human behavior. It's a it models racial dominance as the process by which a dominant group racializes a dominant group. Say again, it models racial dominance as the process by which a dominant group racializes a dominant group. Okay. That's like extra wild, man. Springs a whole new understanding to the conversations, how they go together. Racialization. Colonialization. Colonizer. We hear these words all the time. But we don't put it in its proper perspective. And so given this little bit of information right here, what's the real commentary? We're actually talking about the supremacy. We're actually talking about the racism of colonizers and how they colonized the world based off of free labor. They call it slave labor. So this is where the conversation has to start. We was actually racialized for what? So they could colonize the land, give you a sense of inferiority, give you a sense of self-hatred. Because I can implement self-hatred if I can erase your past. That's exactly what slavery is. It is the erasing of a culture and the processes that aid in the bed and erasing a culture is racialization, 
naming you something new. That's like one of the most important things that humans do is they have the ability to name and define them, self-defining. So colonization does that. Racialization is that process. It's part of that process. And so it becomes real weird when we place that dynamic on ancient cultures. It means you haven't really read anything. That's what it actually means. It means you don't care. But of course you don't care because you have been colonized. Colonization helps soften the blow. Like you have been defeated. Nobody wants to be defeated. Nobody wants to be transformed. You feel, you feel guilty. And so we run around a day with the guilt of our ancestors, right? Them having lost that battle because they clearly lost. We don't want to look that shit in the face and admit, yeah, yeah, we lost. It's like a drug habit. A drug habit is like a colonizer. It colonizes you away from the way you was raised. It racializes you. It changes your name. It changes the pride in who you is. You become a whole nother individual. I know what that process feel like. And so I would like to tell you how I got back to being able to sit right here and talk to y'all. And I slept on this last night. That's why I was amazed at hearing the slight conversation in the server. Because last night I was sleeping on this and I was like, I got back. How did I get back? I got back by remembering who I was. And I did it just like this. I said, I remember when I was a young boy and all I wanted to drink was grape Kool-Aid. That's my favorite shit. You know, it sounded a little crazy. I just like to drink grape Kool-Aid. And I, and, and I took myself back to getting a nice cold glass of grape Kool-Aid, put that damn lemon in there. Lemon, cut some lemons, but shh. Not the one cup of sugar, but the two cups. That's when you bang it. The lemons, the grape. And I went back to those moments of drinking that, being hot, coming in the house, drinking that, eating a sandwich, and then going back outside and playing all day. Man, I was drug free, man. And I, and I remember who I was. I remember who I was playing baseball, Little League baseball and all that. And I remember when I first started getting high. But the only way I was able to pull my my thoughts together and get my mind back where I was was when I recognized who I was prior to that. Why am I saying this? The only way the great black Americans, African Americans can actually get their thing straight is by taking themselves back to the past prior to colonialism and kind of trying to vibe and understand that environment. And once you understand that environment, then you can walk, wake up. Martin Luther King, great thinkers. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, those great thinkers, they took themselves back to that environment. Now I realize that's what gave them the strength to be able to do what they did for us. Because if you don't go back past that environment, you're very comfortable. It's 2024. AC is banging. Take my shirt off. I can, I can, I can, I can whip out my unk, right? I can talk some Egyptian nonsense. It's just a symbol for me, life. I can do that without being arrested, without murder. I can go back to the ancient society to put this together and what it meant. Do all that. But the people who are colonized, they don't know that. They don't understand that. They see no value in looking at Africa. They see no value in looking at Martin Luther King and them. They say, because we cool, yo. Yo, we positive, yo. When you weigh everything, it's a net positive. But forgetting about everything that came before that, yo, you actually can't move forward. Like that, I do understand. That I, fundamentally, for you to uncolonize your mind, right? You would have to go back to the space where you wasn't colonized. For you to stop and get off of drugs and alcohol, 
you would have to go back and actually uh, bathe, right, in that environment when you wasn't that. I had to go back into that environment when I wasn't using drugs. And at that moment, I recognized that I actually didn't need the drugs, that I could live drug free. How do I know? Because for the first 12 years of my life, I lived drug free. So as African-Americans try to take this trip, because great thinkers like Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, they seen that. They seen that we lived in an environment with laws, rules, regulations, formulated our own opinions and religions and named ourselves. They recognized that, and that was important during them times because people was colonized. Hell, people still colonized today, don't even know it. They have no recollection of what happened prior to. They don't care. And oh, we then we find those people that use that as a weight and as an excuse. Yeah, we got those types too. I don't care. I ain't no ass. I don't want to. I ain't no man. I'm none of that. I want to be in it. Fine. Fine. But that means you, you have not actually went back. You're playing. This is serious. See, now I know, been doing it for years, why I do what I do. Because I'm trying to recreate those moments prior to colonization. And if I can recreate that, right, as accurate as possible, that would allow African Americans today to see that they can do the things they need to do, self-entitled, have a strong voice, and be black and goddamn proud. Despite all the colonization. That's why it's important to know your damn story because you went through the guiles of slavery, which erases your story. You're on this side of colonialism. As you go through colonialism, it's a strainer of your ideas, your concept, your language, your voice, your choices, and all the nine yards. Language is culture. There's certain words in your culture that mean certain things. It identifies enemies, your foe, your friends, the way you carry relationships. It identifies a lot in your language. We lost all that. That's why they got the James Webb Telescope, because humanity always wants to know. And the more you know about yourself as a human, the better off you are as humans. But remember, they racialized you and told you you wasn't human. Remember, they racialized you and told you you was of the devil because of the color of your skin. And we carried it in the churches and we put the white Jesuses and we put the white angels. I remember being five years old going to church with my grandma Rice, my favorite person to go to church with. Love that woman. Sitting in the church looking at the, the angels and the God, they was white. I was like, they ain't making no sense. I'm like, Looking in the church, ain't nobody look like that. I couldn't, I was like, I didn't understand that. Even at five and four, didn't make sense to me. That's called colonization. And so these elders tried to work the process and change the white angel to the black angels, change the white Christianity to the black Christianity, change everything was white, they painted it black. They was trying to force you out of colonial's mind. And if you take that out of context and apply that to now, you sounding wild. We ain't making Jesus black because we know he's actually not a real person. Meaning the person that walked on water and saved humanity ain't a real person. It's fictitious. Now the human being that they may write the stories about could possibly based off of scholarship be a real human. But, but that particular human never saved humanity at all. So I can understand why the elders did what they did to paint everything black. I'm not going to sit back and cuss them out because they did that. And oh, by the way, they used white academia to prove their points. How do I know? Because they ain't had the damn books. They wasn't doing no archaeological digs in the 1800s. They didn't start the field of archaeology and Egyptology and all that. They did not. They would have to get the works. They would have to sneak and borrow and steal the, the, the daggone works and the books, you know what I'm saying, to get that information. They didn't have those original ideas. They couldn't have. They wasn't in a position to have them. 
Now, based off the work of the Martin Luther King and the Malcolm X, right? And I use those two figures right there because they figured two different ways of fighting. And now we can see which way it actually worked. Now we can sit on the other side and look back and say, yo, they, 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 they not, they, 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 yeah, they messed that up. We, but we can see that now, but you wouldn't have seen it back then because you're part of the thing. So when I see the statement, is it net positive that colonialism came to Africa where African Americans ended up? That's a crazy statement right there. It has no substance to it. Because if I was to actually go back in time and, and, get, and get colonial powers out of there, then we fucking wouldn't know now, would we? But we do know that Africa has a long track record. Look, look, this is this is this is why I do what I do. Right? This is why I read what I read. Big up to everybody in the chat, yo. We always want to have some fire in the hole for y'all. Right? Come on now. We actually have evidence and precedents to show that left to their own devices, Africa would have developed. Without the aid of racialization and colonialism. So if my ancestors was left to their own devices based off their track record of what they did for the first million years of humanity, then we would have been fine. But we got to put it all in context though. See the difference? Let me read some context for you. So they don't think I'm just making that shit up. So they don't think I'm just talking that talk. Because I talk the talk and I walk the damn walk. So let me read this to you. All right. All right. This is based off of anthropological studies. Okay? This is based off the general history of Africa. One, methodology in African prehistory. Part of the series of UNESCO. What did they have to say? Right? They say, they say, conclusion. This is their conclusion. After they did all this, they reach a conclusion. What's the conclusion? This is my evidence to show you that we would have been doing our thing without colonial powers. Hmm. The preceding chapters amplify, illustrate, the leading role Africa played at the early stages in the story of mankind. Leading role Africa played in the history of mankind. So it's hard to say that a group of leaders wouldn't continue to be leaders without the wild outside forces that came in and colonized it and racialized it. I mean, the ancestors, let me stop. Why are they doing that, man? Damn. The preceding chapters amplify and illustrate the leading role Africa, the leading role Africa played at the early stages in the story of mankind. Although they now stand at the periphery it's the outside of the technological developed world, Africa and Asia were the forefront of processes for the first million and a half years of world history. From the time of Australopithecus and Pithecus Boise, as we now know, Africa was the main setting both of man's emergence as a solvent species, solvent, so, you know, like, a, a per, you know, you have, you have agency, you're, you're, you're free, right? You make decisions of the planet and for the development of the political society. Let me read this again for clarity. Africa was the main center of both man's emergence as a solvent species of the planet and for the development 
of a political society. Ain't no colonizers yet. But the preeminent role it played in prehistory times was followed during the historical period of the past 2,000 years by a pattern of development marked by exploration, exploitation, which reduced the entire continent to a mere tool in the hands of others. That's the point I'm talking about right there. So we got to watch what the hell we talk about when we talk in that talk, when we think we've gotten so intelligent on what we're talking about. We got to watch it because if we don't watch it, yo, we become the very thing we claim to fight against. We need to capitalize, right? We, we need to, my fault, put things in its uh, uh, proper space and time. Put things where they need to be proper. We got a whole book you could read. And after this book is written, they come to the conclusion, right, that we led the way. What happened? Colonialization and racialization happened. That's what the hell happened. So if we was left alone, we would have continued to lead the way, obviously, or at least been in the damn way, or at least been that been that piece we, that we always was. There's no evidence that we would not have moved forward. There's no evidence in that. The early trappings of science and technology, you know what I'm saying, a uh, proto-science and proto-chemistry all occurs in the continent of Africa. Let us not forget that. The, the, the earliest uh, mention of the scientific method is found in the Nile Valley. West Africa, South Africa. I mean, I do the thing. I read it. The, the first time people was actually developing techniques to fight against pandemics occurred in Africa. Social distancing was an original African thought. Yeah, you social distance. You, you spread out. You separate the sick from the non-sick. You don't come around them. You wear masses. That's an African thought. You don't, don't, during time of diseases, they wore masses. They burned down the villages where people were sick. They developed inoculations. Fight the pathogens with the pathogen. So there's no, there's no evidence that we wouldn't have kept marching forward. Please don't make the same mistake that the great Charles Darwin made. Charles Darwin made the mistake. What was his mistake? When he started to travel on the Beagle. See, nobody actually reads. It's the reason why I read these things, because there's going to be conversations when I know I can jump up and, and actually give clarity to situations. Charles Darwin, right, as he went to other places because he circumnavigated the globe. As he circumnavigated the globe, of course, he ran into indigenous people. And he felt them to be technologically behind. The same way African Americans will make that statement now. Back then, when Charles Darwin made that trip, he would say that. But guess what happened, y'all? As he sat with the people, he started to realize that even though they didn't have what Europeans had, they had a valuable civilization. Even though they didn't have the exact same technology, they were fit for their environment. And even though they couldn't speak their language or fix a boat and all that, or fix this tool, do that, that they could actually learn it once they learned the language. And once Charles Darwin realized they had the ability to learn the language and was just as intelligent as anybody he's ever seen in this world, he realized, yo, that they was human just like everybody else. And then he started to ask the questions that I like to ask. Why? Is it when a great black woman is, front, is confronted by slave masters and she decides to jump off the cliff, why is she a imbecile or a heathen? But when Cleopatra or great Roman emperors decide to take poison to save their humanists, why aren't they looked at as heathens and imbeciles? 
and he pondered these questions. And that's where he saw the rubber met the road. That's when he understood by, 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 by studying all of nature, by seeing the diversity in the plants, right? The, the plant, the fauna, right? That's the animals, the plants. He see that diversity. He recognized that things are transformed to our environment. There was no need for the West Africans to have a plane or intercontinental ship for their environment. They had great river barges. They could take supplies and goods back and forth, up and down the rivers, on the coastline, and trade proper. These kings were renowned without intercontinental ships. They had no need for that. On the other hand, Europeans had a need to develop technology that would take them and explore the oceans. So it's about for the need for things is how this world works. If you don't have a need for it, then you don't have a need for it. Now, we only started to have a need for the things that they had when they came in as colonial powers. Now you need a damn gun. Now the spears ain't working right. Now the bows and arrow ain't dead because they shooting guns. The funny part about it was those rocks they was throwing, those spears they had, and bows and arrows they had were formidable against the first guns. We got examples of Shaka Zulu proving that colonial powers with guns could not defeat his army because you only got one shot. And he developed maneuvers to get around and get them before they could reload again. You can actually read the colonial reports on how formidable those rocks was that they was throwing at them. How serious those spears, the spears would knock you 20 feet when they hit you as you're trying to reload. You only get one shot, pow! Don't let it be raining. Gunpowder got wet, you're in trouble. So we need to really study our story and our history so we can get this and understand that. Don't just make conversations based off of your limited understanding of the whole picture. Let me drop this link. Got a couple minutes. Let me hear what say you. Made sure I stayed out the chat. And when I hear all that, I want to get that off my chest. Appreciate y'all for stopping through, man. I wanted to get it off my chest right there, man. Without no interruptions, without talking over nobody, without none of the above, man. Drop the link in the server. If y'all want to jump in, jump in. Give me your opinion on the situation, man. Let's keep it cordial. Down there, I went to it. Shout out to Joel. I see you, Mongo Slade. What it do? Miss Tiffany, what's up with you? Got my first caller. Joel, what's good? What say you, brother? Peace. I'm peace, man. How you doing? Hey, man, just having fun, man. Just piggyback hey, and make look. sense of the conversation, brother. I got to make hey, sense of I can't look. fight all these people. I'm doing something different. I can't do it. It's not, it's not for me. What's up? What's on and your you mind? Made you made perfect sense. And you put that together good, right? See, here's, here's what people do. They like to crunch a thousand years into yesterday. Mm -hmm. And they don't pay no attention to how things developed and, and, and what all went into, you know, making things look the way they look right now. And, and just like you said, look, one thing about the Africans, they could have just stayed on their continent and been fine. They was already building. They was already starting to write. Uh, 50 talking about something they couldn't write. They was already starting all these things, right? And they didn't need to come off their continent. Other groups need to come up off theirs. And so it's a mischaracterization to try to make it seem like uh, Africans wouldn't have done anything had it not been for, you know, the colonizers. You know, those, those folks were struggling. 
they had to go out and find goods. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, these they, pe people, people just simply don't think about like, like how how Africans also were held back by the colonizers. No, you see what I'm saying? Exactly what happened. It got. It's called "We Do Work" by Walter Rodney. How how Europe underdeveloped Africa is well known. It ain't, it ain't hiding. It's, right. It's, so I, that's I mean, why. Like, even if they took twelve million people and then left the continent alone, yo, they would have did what humans did, yo. Imagine they didn't do none of that, just took the twelve million people, right, and then left them alone, kept communications back and forth. They would have did what all humans do, yo. They would have moved forward like like they doing right now. Exactly. The writing part, obviously, writing couldn't have been that essential. Humans didn't write. Humans just started writing. Hey, look, didn't um China China develop writing on yeah. their own? Their their language is like nobody else's. Yeah, they developed writing on their own. Yeah, on their own. Long that it wasn't it wasn't millions of years ago though. <laughs> humans. But the point, but the point I'm trying to make is that to try to say that somebody got to be in contact with another group in order to start writing is true. bananas to me it's, it's crazy saying anything because he, 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 he done bumped his head he done bumped his head on he slipped on, on a banana bumped his head and woke up pseudo yeah the indigenous people of uh mesoamerica they developed their own writing system no, but they actually probably did it twice head, you're not gonna dive in here talking though yo we're not having that type of conversation yo I'll give you a chance, James. Give me a minute. Oh, I bet. Yeah, <laughs> calm down, bro. That, that gets me in a space where I'm acting crazy. I don't want to do that. I want the conversation to be heard. You finish, you finish, uh, Mr. Armstrong. All right, go ahead, James. What's on your mind? Yeah, all I was saying is that, like, yeah, the brother's correct. Um, yeah, you don't need people, other people to teach you, like, you know, uh, in a writing system. <laughs> it just so happens that, you know, the ones that we use over here in the West, mm -hmm. you know, if you trace it back, we'll eventually go back to uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The proto synatic script, which is ancient Egyptian in origin. So, like, you know, that, the what, that's what, what happened. What, what? what, is it proto synatic or no? You're you talking about the alphabet? The alphabet comes out of the, uh, the proto synatic. Yes, the alphabet. My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The alphabet. Yeah. Did I say language? My bad. No, that's not. That's an alphabet. Alphabet. Right, right, right. That particular yeah. writing system, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. So, like, you know, it's it's because you got the Mayans; they have their own, uh, you know, quote yeah. unquote hieroglyphics, and you have the Chinese uh, yeah, without no right. white people, no white people, no black people. Did no. you classify none of that? It's all separate. The same thing with uh, even the Polynesians. Like when you look at the, uh, I think it's called the Renongo script. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have that over there in Easter Island. Like they they developed that, and they they can't even decipher it because they don't even know. Like people will find ways to communicate without talking. That's just always how it is. You even find that in, in uh, what do you call it, in West Africa when you look at like the Yoruba people and stuff like that. When they had to communicate, they would they would use what they call talking drums. And what the drums did is, is that since the Yoruba language is tonal, it kind of takes on a form of like you know, um, like speech. So the 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 drums will kind of mimic like certain speech patterns of course not as complicated but they will get simple messages across so like people will always try to communicate whether symbolically or you know or through like sound or something that is not literal speaking so people will find a way and i believe our ancestors would have found a way eventually i mean like you got the inca that were doing the quipu which is like tied knots and you know it's, they were telling histories with that and they were doing calculations of like you know uh how much grain they had, how much this they had, inventory, all that stuff. This pe people will always find a way. Like we don't need, and and I know that throughout the community they always say like Egypt starts everything, and you know it's 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 it's, it's really insulting because like it's to say that people couldn't be brilliant in where they were, and people couldn't come up with things where they were, and that's and I think that's that's the problem. Yeah. That you know, you need one. Let's freeze it right open. there. Let's freeze it right there. I'm gonna yeah. get everybody in. Sun Chow, you got two minutes because I'm getting off. I got something to do. Got something to say, Sun Chow. 
Yeah, um, just like to add some context to the conversation, brother. Uh, I think the idea is um, I hear brother people like Candace Owens, Thomas Sowell speak about this about the net profit of African Americans and the, the the enslavement and and uh, how they may have profited from it. There's an article by a gentleman named Larry Elder. And he says that uh, African Americans, uh, based on their economy, they would be the 15th wealthiest nation in the world based on their spending uh, power. Uh, if you look at the 15 wealthiest countries in the world, there are no African nations in that list. So I've had even personal conversations about this where people would suggest by that by those statistics, African Americans came out on top because so you of, agree or disagree. Uh, you you agree or disagree. I, I disagree. I, I disagree. I think there's something right, very so perverted. We'll, we'll run back later on on that. I got to get out of here. Hey, Ghana, you want to say something? You got one second. Yeah, I disagree with that too. That's just like saying if someone got molested, but the guy <laughs> gave him some gifts or something. That we, hey, doesn't matter what kind of extra gift you got out of somebody taking and abusing you. Doesn't make sense to even consider that. Well, it makes sense to consider it. Not that analogy you gave you, but the overall thing. Look, man, we just wanted to get that little piece in, man. Look, man, I wanted to get a quick one in. Y'all got to get out of here. Y'all running behind, man. I appreciate everybody, man. Uh, yeah, I just want to get my two cents in the matter. No, my five dollars in my five dollars in the matter, man. Appreciate everybody, man. That's how we do it, yo. Man, upgrade your information and knowledge, man. We're gonna jump back in the surf and finish this conversation, man. I just want to say my piece, man. I appreciate that, ladies and gentlemen, man. man hit that cash app, stop playing, show some love, man. Y'all know what it is, man. Cha cha cha. That's that hour show, that fire type of thing, in and out, man. And with that, man, we out. Peace. Black African power, man. Pseudo killers on deck, man. Check out our family of shows, man. That's what we're doing, yo. We're coming in real hot. Upgrade.